no matter which range you go to to fire your weapons and exercise your Second Amendment rights, someone at some point is going to yell, is the range safe? Is it cold? Can we go down and check our targets? But you always wonder, is it truly a safe and cold range? Because someone probably doesn't have a safety flag in their chamber. This video is going to discuss a simple product that you should have in your range bag so you can give everyone else peace of mind that your gun is in a safe and stable condition. Hey guys, Just D here with Just D Outdoors. Welcome back to my channel here on YouTube. Today I want to do a product review on something that's been missing from my range bag forever. Uh, I've been negligent and shame on me for not having these in my range bag. Uh, I like to say that I was ignorant of the fact that they even existed, but that's really not a good enough excuse. Uh, but as I've been going to the range more and more and actually competing in some of the club matches out there and see other people use these, I realize how important they are and uh, what a peace of mind it gives not only you but the other shooters out there uh, that are using them. And what I'm talking about here is the safety tools. Uh, this one is the SME. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw this up on the screen so everybody can see what I'm talking about. These are the SME Chamber Safety Flag Tool Packages 6. Uh, the shorter, stubbier ones here are uh, for pistols, but they make them also here, as you can see here in this picture. Uh, they're longer and skinnier to go up in the chamber for rifles. I'll be ordering a package of those for midway on my next order. Uh, they're $8 for a pack of six. Uh, again, I just got the pistol package, and then they have them for a rifle, and they also have them for a shotgun. Uh, I want to show you a picture here of them uh, front and back of the package they come in uh, in a comparison in size there to a quarter. Now, on the back side of the package there, you can see uh, it tells you that these are green color, clearly indicates that uh, the weapon's unloaded. It also has a flat edge there that you can use to adjust your windage and elevation of your scope. And it says they're made of a tough and durable high temperature resistant polymer material. Well, that's questionable. Uh, they come with a nine day limited warranty, uh, but it also says that if you uh, damage or destroy these on your own negligence, basically, then they may not cover that. Well, guys, the two uh, biggest critiques I read on these, and I always try to read the reviews on any product that I buy, and I usually go straight to the bad reviews first. One dealt with color and one dealt with durability. Uh, the color, guys, if, if you order one that looks like it's a red one on, on the internet, it comes in red. Well, that could be because of the camera they use to take the picture with. It could be your screen. Uh, who knows why it looks a little different. Uh, these are high visibility green. I, I really don't think it matters unless your club or your rules dictate that it has to be a certain color. As long as it's a high visibility color and people can see it sticking in there, letting them know that your weapon is in a safe condition. So people complain about the color. And then the second was the durability is that these were kind of brittle, and I really read that on just about all of them, that they were brittle and they have a tendency to break. So I was willing to test that out. Sure enough, of the six, I've had two that have broken. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what one looks like here in my hand. Uh, not broken. And you can see I've been using it, and it's got some mar marks on there, some scratch marks on it where it's been getting hit by the slide or the bolt carrier. This one is broken. Uh, this is the piece that is broken off of it. Uh, that goes uh, right here. Oop, let me go the correct way. It goes right here like this. So that's what it looks like, and these broke off. Now, I would think that when you release the slide or a bolt carrier on an AR, that would be breaking off right here. And you can actually see scratch marks and scuff marks there uh, where that is, you know, catching that and hitting that, but it's not breaking there. It's breaking off right there, but it is still usable, and for the $8 I spent, it's not worth me sending it back to, the, to Midway to get replaced for. So I want to show you some weapons here and how they work. So these are for a pistol, right? So here's a 1911 Springfield 45 caliber. So obviously these should fit without a problem, and they do. They go up in there. So even like this with the chamber open, people can go by there and see that the uh, flag is in there and the gun is in a safe condition. Now, for the sake of this, I can see if I can break this. I'll release the slide on a 1911. It's locked in there now and it's not going anywhere. So, sliding the slide back, that one did not break. So, what causes it to break, and especially uh, in this certain position, I'm not sure, but they do have a tendency to break. Two of mine have. Here's a little bit smaller 1911. This is a Springfield 1911 uh, EMP 4-inch barrel. 
And again, uh, goes up in there without a problem. Okay, people can see right away that the gun's in a safe condition. Release the slide, it doesn't go anywhere. No problem whatsoever. Now I'm also going to demonstrate here in a second the, I'm going to set these here to remind me, the, the flags that came with this weapon. Here is a 22 uh, Ruger uh, Mark IV. And again, it should go in here, but it doesn't. Now I don't know if it's because this piece is too big a diameter to go up into the chamber or because it's a little too long here. So in the position or in the, in the, in the state of a, a good one, a working one that's not broken, this doesn't work. But my broken ones do. They go up in there. So either I could leave it like that at the range, people can walk by, see it's uh, safe condition, or I could drive, drive it forward and it locks into place and it doesn't come out. So the Springfield and the Ruger both came with their own safety flags, and I think that's required by law that they do that. They're a little smaller in size, as you can see. Uh, they don't even compare. So this one is one that came for the Ruger. It goes up in there like that. It's not very big. You can't see it from very far away, but you can notice it. And again, they're trying to save money. This is the one that goes in the Springfield. It's kind of got this pincher thing here, so it expands when it goes up in there to keep it in place. And again, doesn't compare in size, but it does its job. The point I want to make out is both of these are made out of a material that is very flexible, very soft and flexible. This one's a little stiffer, but gives. If these were made out of this material, they would probably be perfect because then you would have the flexibility. But these are very stiff and why they don't make these plastic ones out of this material right here, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell you. So that's with a Ruger 22. So what if you have a wheel gun? Okay, now a lot of the, now some of the wheel guns, uh, like the 30 H357s, the cylinder actually you know pops out to the side. This is a Ruger uh, Beasley Vaquero, so the only way to get the wheel out, the cylinder, is to pull the pin all the way out and drop the thing out. Well, that's kind of not really practical all the time at the range. So you may do this number right here, and people say, the range is cold, can I go check my target or whatever, and you set it like that. Well, people still don't know that the gun is in a safe condition. You could take one of these, slide it up in here, again, lock it like that, and people are going to realize that your gun is in a safe condition. Now, is it locked in there solid? No, but it's sitting there and people can see from a distance that this gun is in a safe condition. So this is a, a, a revolver that the cylinder does not come out on. Okay, so I want to demonstrate here on a couple of uh, rifles. I'm not going to go through the whole arsenal here. You get the point. This is a Savage 22. Again, these are not designed for a rifle. But this one is intact, it's not broken, and it does go up in there and fits just fine. And again, people can tell that my gun is in a safe condition. Gives them a little peace of mind. I want to set that aside and pull out probably the most common weapon you're seeing at the range these days. It's a very popular weapon. Is the old AR. And this one is in a 5.56 uh, configuration. So again, this one, designed for a pistol, goes up in there just fine. Set it like that, you can leave it alone. I'll drive the bolt forward, or the bolt carrier group, see if it breaks it. And see, I didn't set it in there all the way down, so it's kind of caught it at an angle, which is fine. Let's pull it out and see if it broke it. It did not. It did scuff it up a little bit here because I caught it at an angle. I'm trying to do this on camera one-handed to keep everything focused. So I did break it a little bit there, chip it but it's still in one piece and did not break. So why? I've had two break and in that posi particular position I'm not sure. And this is the pin right here that I'm talking about where they demonstrate that you would use these to push your pins out to uh, disassemble your weapon. So you get the point. I'm not going to sit there and try to do that in camera and knock my camera around jiggly jiggly. And then this part right here is where you would adjust your screws. You'd use it like I use a quarter or a penny or a dime uh, to adjust my scope, windage, and elevation settings. So, guys, that's it on that product. Again, I don't 
really care. I don't think it really matters whether you have an SME or whoever makes it. Uh, but it's important to have it if you're going to the range and shooting so people can see that your gun is in a safe condition. As that uh, little 20 or 30 second intro shot showed where I was out there at the range and I had my weapons with the flags in, as I walked down the line you could see those bright green flags and when I got to the end and you saw the Savage 22 without one, uh, you knew that gun may or may not be in a safe condition. You weren't sure if you were going down range and you looked over your shoulder to see uh, what the guns look like. But all the way down the line you could see that AR with that green flag sticking out. So guys, these are cheap, they're inexpensive, even broken, they work. It's better to have them in there than not. You know, so be a good steward at the range. Uh, let other people know that you're conscious about your safety and theirs. And so when the people say, and someone yells out, is the range cold, can we go check our targets? You know, is the range safe? Someone can walk down the line or look down the line and say, yes it is, I'm going forward. I don't have to worry about that guy down at the end which might be me at this case, or whether my gun is open, safe, whatever, or it's loaded, I can see that green flag and know that he's taking care of his weapon. So I invest, I encourage you to invest in these. It's well worth the money. And uh, until the next video, uh, take care, God bless, and be safe. And uh, please, if this video helps you out, hit the like and subscribe button down below. Take care.